So I was born in a small southern Indiana town called Bedford, and right after that, um, as an infant, my family moved away. However, my mother's sister and brother remained, and they got married, and they had kids and started a family. One of uh, the great joys of my life was going back to Bedford when I was growing up and spending time with my aunts and uncles and cousins. One of my uncles was a veterinarian, and in this small rural county in Indiana, he did a lot of large animal practice as well as dogs and cats and normal stuff. And I loved going on calls with him to uh, go to the farms and help him, well, I'm not sure it was that much help, but I thought I was a lot of help, uh, do the large animal work that he did. And when I was 11 years old, he got a call from a farmer who had a cow that was choking on a pear and had been for about a day. And he said, I thought it, he'd be able to, or she would be able to get it up, but she's still coughing. And I'm thinking, I didn't know cows could cough. This will be kind of cool. So we get in his Bronco, and my uncle was a very dapper man, uh, slim build, always had a fedora on, and he chain smoked from Lucky Strikes to cool non-filters, back and forth all day. Amazing, but he was fit and he was able to do all this heavy animal work. So we're going out in the Bronco and we go way out into the county and we get to this farm that was not, well, let's put it this way, it didn't look like the guy was making a lot of money. <laughs> but, you know, dirt farmers, they are honest people, they work hard, they're doing the best they can. This cow was really important. And we drive out into the field where there's kind of decrepit looking pear tree is sitting. And sure enough, the cow is there. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm, they cough. We, we had a, uh, a trailer hooked to the back of the Bronco that for those of you who've never done this, they're a dehorning trailer. You take a cow with horns, you run them into the trailer, you clap the, the uh, sides around their neck so they can't get away, and you cut their horns off. Well, we were gonna use this to hold the cow so he would be able to get the pair out. So the farmer and my uncle and I are all kind of forming a human barrier and we're pushing this cow up as it's going, <laughs> <laughs> we get it into the trailer, we clamp the, the uh, sides onto its neck. Now she's a little freaked out. Her eyes get about this big. Now she can't move. <laughs> My uncle says, go get that roll of baling wire and bring it over to me, please. And so the farmer gets the baling wire. He tells me, now you stand behind me and you start to feed me this baling wire. Okay. So he's standing in front of the cow. He makes a loop out of this baling wire. The farmer comes up ground, holds the cow's mouth open, and my uncle starts to feed this loop down her throat to dislodge the pear as I stand behind him. And I'm feeding out this wire, and he's going like this down into the cow, and all of a sudden he kind of flips his wrist and yanks that out, and drops to his, to his hands and knees. The farmer backs off. And I'm standing there. I was breathless. Because I suddenly realized I've been set up. That cow looked at me and I looked at her and she just went, now, before I do that, fun fact, cows really only have one stomach. Some people have heard they have four. That's not true. They have one stomach with four chambers. Those four chambers combined can hold, on the average, 50 gallons. <laughs> 50 gallons that have been fermenting for a day and a half. And the cow went, and I swear, the pear hit me right there, <laughs> along with 50 gallons of, well, you know, grass. 
It was incredible. Now, you know, farmers don't have a lot in their lives that make them laugh. This guy could not get up off the ground. And neither could my uncle. They were both breathless. And I was covered head to toe with this incredibly icky green goo. Years later, when I went to see Ghostbusters, I really think I experienced PTSD. I've been there. I've done that. And I threw away the shirt. So the, the, the moral of this story was, though, that when you are doing something to be a, a help and you're really engaged in what is going on, you don't want to lose the focus of what everybody else is doing. If it, 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 it was my problem. I didn't realize when they hit the dirt that I should have done the same thing. So ultimately, I was breathless as well. And I didn't want to take a deep breath for a long time after that. Either. Thank you.